Hi and welcome to the 10th part of my series on writing applications with Qt and Boost in C++. Um, today it's about Boost serialization. I've created a little bit of my own solution for this as I don't like the way uh, Boost serialization is, um, you know, there, there are two official ways to use it. The one is intrusive, which I don't like because it's intrusive and all my classes uh, have to basically include the code for serialization. And the second method is non-intrusive, but requires that your members are public or that you copy uh, uh, your data via intermediate variables with setters and getters into the archive. Um, I don't like that solution and I was looking for a third way to do things and I found one. Um, and in the background you see the first element of my solution, which is a macro which will generate a certain access method which is intrusive on, on one way, but does not include anything about serialization. So this tuple macro, uh, actually tuple access, uh, will generate a, a method. And I can show you how that looks like in, in a actual class. I just have this tuple access macro here. And I have the name and post members, which I want to serialize. And this then generates uh, method which is looking very similar like this comment here uh, which is the old uh, method which i was using here um, one reason i use uh, macro now is that um, i don't want to declare the the types similarly here like and also um, this version is still using uh, giving the the version um, into into this and uh, I found out that this interface is not needed, that I can handle that actually in, in the code. And But currently versioning is not a topic for me anyways. And then I return via tie, um, just a tuple which contains references to each member, which now is simply just generated by this tuple access macro. Um, The serialization code itself lives in the serializer class. Um, it has a very simple public interface, a, a constructor which takes a node which is to be serialized or to be loaded and uh, has a save and load method and that's it. And it has an internal load to DM method and a few other um, members which it needs to do its job. And if I go in the C++ file, um, you see that's a bit of, um, this is a complete file which contains all the implementation. Um, I want to start with those two macros. Um, one of them is for just serializing a type, as you see here, and the other one is for serializing a derived type. And it actually contains um, basically this template function, which is the standard way to serialize things with uh, the non-intrusive way. So um, I have to do this here as this is uh, an enum, and I had to define it. Um, that's not possible via the macro version because I cannot give the, the, the access method, which we will see up here, uh, where I simply um, have now in the macro, I call fusion for each from boost, um, get the tuple via tuple access, and then have this tuple uh, helper class, which um, gets instantiated with the actual instance of the archive. And the fusion helper simply takes the archive by reference, has an operator, a call operator templated, and serializes the type. And that's it, we're done. Um, and via for each, I just go over each tuple which gets handed in. And um, if a class is derived, we have to also serialize its base. And that is then by this macro simply added to the code before we again go in the other code with boost uh, fusion for each. So um, then there's a, a few helpers. Um, this is a helper function for registering types and all types which are derived from a different other class I have to register at runtime to an archive and I use this template method to a uh, template function 
to simply do this and uh, the advantage of this is that I only have to write it once, otherwise I would have to write it for loading and saving, and that would kind of suck. Um, this is another helper function, um, reading values from from the archive uh, needs to be done in this way, and I just wanted to, to have a method which reads a value and returns it, and that's very, very practical, and the code which we will see makes it a lot shorter and readable, more readable in my opinion. The safe method, um, I have a version which currently doesn't play any role, but in the future is probably very nice to have. I just uh, create an off string, a text or archive. Um, I register the types, I write out the version, I write out the document, and a few other things. And then I have this tree visitor, which actually um, visits the tree. And via the serialization visitor, then just writes out the tree to the archive. Um, loading is very similar. I again load first the document and then I have to call load deer here because um, I have to have some special function which loads the actual deer structure. Um, I can solve this for saving with the uh, so there's a simple way of doing it in, 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 in a special way with a tree visitor, but when I load it that the tree actually isn't there, I have to create it. And as the classes which I use do not know anything about the tree, I have to have a function which is basically acting as sort of like a factory to recreate this user created tree. And this is happening in load deer. And it's simply um, creates a local variable, which is um, the deer, which is currently the, the node where we work on. Um, and if, if we're not in the first node and in, in, in the root node, we have to create that first. So we read the deer value, um, we read then uh, the value, which is the children, which is the count, the child count of this node and then loop over the child count and read in. Um, we uh, go in reverse and in recursion. We recurse when it is a directory and if it's a page, we simply read the page and have it placed in that node. And that's the whole code for serialization. Um, so it's pretty straightforward solution, um, a few more details in the blog post. I always record at night, so it's already pretty late and I had a little bit of problems with the recording program tonight. So um, thank you for listening. This is also the last episode before CppCon. I'm gonna be at CppCon. Maybe I'm gonna see a lot of you there and I'm really looking forward to it. So see you at CppCon or see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.